Hey YouTubers, Big Swole 58 here, and I'm back with another of a series of videos talking about my Smith & Wesson revolver collection and how I acquired some of these fine handguns, and really just to showcase what I have and um, how I paid so little for these guns in comparison to what market values are and what I needed to do or had to do in order to get them into the shape that you see them in now. Now what you're looking at are my model 629's. Two are older, older guns and both of which are 629-1's. This is my 4 inch 629 and this is my 6 inch 629. Both are dash one guns. This is my newest Offering from Smith & Wesson. This is a 629-6 3 inch Taylor edition gun. Now, I know some of you are saying, well, that's not a Taylor gun because it doesn't have the Taylor grips on it. Well, here are the Taylor grips, which I don't particularly care for. I mean, they're nice, but they're not very comfortable. And they're not as nice as the older grips or stocks that Smith & Wesson used to make in-house. Now, these are being contracted out through, I believe it's the Altamont Grip Company, and they're putting them on their Taylor Edition guns. When Smith & Wesson sent their guns to Taylor distributors, and they would, they would affix these grips or these stocks to the gun, as, as, you know, as well as whatever additions, uh, additions they would make to the gun in order to, for it to classify as their uh, Taylor Deluxe models. And uh, I'm not exactly sure what all of that was, but I believe some of it has to do with the finish. I think they actually polished the finishes up a little bit on some of the earlier uh, Taylor Edition guns. And I think some of the difference between the newer Taylor Edition guns and these Taylor Edition guns is now the Smith & Wesson logo as well as the Smith & Wesson caliber designations is laser etched onto the gun where these are actually stamped just like you know the old roll marks used to be now the only thing I know that they're still doing is they're still laser etching the Smith & Wesson logo the brand but everything else about these guns is sort of like the old original guns now this one which is like I said it's a dash six Taylor edition I shot this gun probably, I don't know, maybe 50 rounds. And these grips feel fantastic in hand. I mean, I couldn't, I couldn't ask for a better set of stocks. These fit my hand perfectly, and I just love them. Uh, just like all Smith & Wesson handguns, uh, the double action trigger pull is long, but it's smooth. Now, I don't know if they smooth these out at Taylor Distributors, but they actually, it's actually a really nice trigger pull. And the single action is, well, typical Smith & Wesson single action. I don't know what the weight is, and I'm not just really here to talk about the gun, and I'm not trying to make a gun review. There's lots and lots of those for anybody that's interested in them. That's, that YouTube's full of them. So this is not about the review of the firearm. This is more about how to acquire some of these guns at decent prices and if you're buying a pre-owned gun, you usually you're probably like most people who buy pre-owned cars. You accept a certain condition on the gun, and if it's not up to the standard that you want, most people who buy pre-owned vehicles, they usually possess a certain number of skills or a certain skill level where they can get that car into the condition that they want it, or they buy it, knowing full well that they're going to do that to it. Well, I take the same approach to my firearm collecting and just like you buy a car at a lower price than say the market may be calling for or demanding you can do the same thing with a handgun and you can recondition or refurbish that gun to the condition that you want it in just like you would a car now here's a good example now, when it comes to firearm purchasing 
and, and acquiring, I, use, I leave no stone unturned. I look everywhere. If I have a, a, a gun in mind that I'm looking for, I also have a price in mind that I'm looking to purchase it for. Now, I don't think I'm no different than anybody else in that regard. But I think what happens in a lot of cases is that I think a lot of times the buyers want the gun more than the seller wants to sell it. And my, what I mean by that is many times we wind up spending more on a gun, just like we do cars, than the seller is actually willing to take for it in the condition that it's in. So I'm saying is that guns, just like vehicles, the prices are always negotiable. And if you don't get it for the price that you're wanting to spend for it, don't buy it. Just leave it. Because just like cars and just like buses, there's another one coming along. I promise you that. Now, I'm going to start with this model. Six, 629-3, Taylor Edition. I'm sorry, dash six, three inch Taylor Edition gun. Now, these earlier Taylor Edition guns were retailing, what well, Smith & Wesson said, $999. Well, I know for a fact, because I looked, that they were retailing a few years ago, and even last year, somewhere in the neighborhood of $750 to $850. Now, for a lot of people who wanted one that bad, God bless them, go buy it. I didn't. Matter of fact, I would be happy even with buying a used one. But the used ones were selling even around the $700 price point. Well, I'm a patient looker. And I have a price in mind that I'm wanting to buy one for. And it doesn't have to be in pristine condition. Because I know how to recondition the metal and I know how to restore or recondition the stocks. So I'm willing to wait on the price for the firearm that I want to buy as long as it meets the minimum condition that I'm looking for it in. Now I know people tend to rate these firearms, you know, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%. Well, I'm looking for that 80 to 85% gun. As long as it is functionally and mechanically sound, appearance-wise and aesthetic-wise, I can recondition or refurbish it. Now, this holds true on a stainless gun and not so much on a blued gun because if the blued gun scratched up and damaged, you got to send it off and get it reblued. That's just going to add additional cost to the gun. You may as well buy the pristine gun if it's blued and or nickel plated. But if it has a stainless finish with just a, with, with a minimum skill level, you can do this yourself. Now, here's a good example. Now, I did buy one, one of these guns I bought brand new. This one. That gun was bought brand new less than a year ago. The price I paid for this gun is probably going to astound some of you, but I got, bought that gun brand new, shipped free for $629. Brand new, shipped free, $629. How? Because I'm a patient buyer. I look extensively, I look consistently, and I look patiently. And if I'm not getting it for the price that I want, I just don't buy it. I just leave it. There's always another one coming along, I promise you. Now, sometimes you're going to be lucky, sometimes you're going to be good. This time, I was both. That was a online seller selling this this firearm and he had a buy it now price on it 
about $819. And he wasn't getting any bids on it. Uh, he was running a reserve and a buy it now and a minimum offering. His reserve was never met. Nobody did buy it now. So I kept watching it and watching it and watching it. And he was bringing it down slowly. He brought it down to like $779, which is a great deal. I know that. But I wasn't willing to spend that for it. So I just kept looking, not just at his listing, but others, as well as other uh, retail, online retail sites and so forth. Well, about probably three or four weeks into this, I guess the seller got frustrated and at an odd hour during the middle of the week in the morning, like 8.30 a.m., he listed that gun on a three-day auction. Maybe he was just uh, frustrated for a buy it now of $629 free shipping. And I immediately bought it. Immediately. And that's how I acquired that gun. $629 free shipping. $629-6 Taylor Edition gun. Now, all these guns have been safety checked before I set them out here, so I'm not going to deliberately go out and show everybody that the guns are safe. Um, they are, trust me. Okay? Now, <clears throat> didn't have to do anything to that gun. That's exactly how that gun came, except for the stocks. I know I didn't polish it up and didn't do anything to it. That's exactly how that gun came, brand new in a box. So $629, no shipping. You throw in my... $15 FFL, I'm $644. I've got a brand new Taylor Edition Smith & Wesson 629. I don't believe you can beat that price anywhere. If you can, please comment in the comment section because I'm interested in knowing. All right. About three years ago, I bought this gun. Now, It looked nothing like this when I bought it. It was actually in pretty ugly shape. Now, every gun's got a story, and there's a story for every story. Now, whether the truth, whether you, it's the truth or not, you don't ever know. But when you have conversations with the owners, sometimes you get a feel for whether they're blowing smoke or telling the truth. <clears throat> Excuse me. That gun I bought from the original owner. He bought it new back in the mid 80s because he always wanted a Smith & Wesson 44 Magnum revolver. Now this is a 629-1. Well, after he keep after keeping it for some years, he had two sons. He passed it down to his to the elder of the two sons. Now, according to the owner, he wasn't a real outdoorsy type of guy. And he wasn't into hunting, fishing, firearms, those sort of things. And after shooting the gun once or twice, he didn't like it. And subsequently, he sold it to his younger brother, who, on the other hand, was the outdoorsy type of guy and did enjoy having a gun. But when the younger son, he would go out in the field hunting, fishing, hiking, whatever he did, he would carry this gun. So the gun didn't get a lot of shooting use. It was just carried a lot. Well, sometime during the time that the second son, the younger son, owned this firearm, he stripped the original stocks off of it and the sight and mounted a scope and put whole grips on it. And... After some years, he decided then that he wanted to move up to a larger caliber. And he took the scope off of the gun, mounted it on the new gun that he bought. And that gun wound up back in a safe or in a drawer somewhere. To some years later, then he decided to sell it <clears throat> back to his older brother who did not want it. And he was going to try to, I guess, sell the gun. But the father decided he would buy the gun back. 
when purchasing it back from his younger son, he discovered that the gun had kind of been rough housed. It was scratched up real bad. It was dirty because he had never cleaned it. The son had never cleaned it. And it was missing the original target stocks as well as the original box and paperwork. So he bought the gun back from his son for whatever price. And he was so disgusted with it that he decided that he would sell it. Well, he and I, we, we, I, he ran this gun on gun broker for several auctions and couldn't get a buyer. They wasn't meeting his reserve. And I emailed him and we subsequently talked. And this is how number one is how I got this story. And we negotiated a price on the gun. Just as it was with the whole grips. Uh, he did, the son did return the, the, the sight to him. So I was able to keep the sight. But the gun was scratched up and it was dirty. I mean, it was it, it, it looked off. It looked like it had been carried in the field for, for some years. But from a functional standpoint, the gun's tight. You know, it's got its typical 44 Magnum, you know, cylinder movement. Lock up on it, though, in the single action mode is pretty tight. Trigger is great. Um, the gun itself was pretty nice. So I bought this gun. For less than 600 bucks. Now I don't know if that's good or bad. I know what the market was bringing at the time. It was a great price. And then I look at what the market's bringing for them now. It's an excellent price. Because I see these guns all the time. On Gun Broker. On uh, Arms List. Guns America. And especially at local shops. In the used gun departments. And at gun shows. For anywhere from, from, from $850 to $1,200. If they've got nice Smith and Wesson stocks on them and they're in excellent condition, they're, they're, this is this is what people are demanding for them. And this is not hearsay. This is what I know. So I've got that gun for twelve for six hundred dollars, less than six hundred bucks. Bought a pair of stocks off of eBay. I think I paid about sixty five dollars for these because they were a wreck as well, and I just refinished them. Refinished the stocks. I did a complete and total disassembly and cleaning on the firearm. Then I, what I did was to recondition the metal was I went through a series of wet sandings on it to remove all of the scratches and got it to a point where it was smooth and then I took some metal polish and polished it up to uh, it's not a mirror finish by no means, but it's a bright polished finish the way you see it right now. I think I started out with a thousand grit wet wet sandpaper and moved to fifteen hundred, then to two thousand, and then I polished the gun with I believe it was either Neville Dull uh, wadding or uh, Mother's Mag and aluminum polish. And that's what, and that's how the gun turned out. After put the uh, refinished grips on it, and I've got a showpiece. I've got six hundred and probably fifty dollars in the gun, and several hours worth of work. But I love that gun now. It shoots great. It's extremely accurate. It, it's this. It does not have a flaw on it now. And this is what you can do. <clears throat> now, lastly, 629-1 six-inch version. All right. Now, this one I bought as you see it, but not in the condition that it's in. It had the original stocks on it. The gun itself, the lockup on it is great. Trigger is good. Have no no issues with it whatsoever. I bought this gun from its original owner again. Father owned the gun, <clears throat> passed the gun to his son or sold it to his son. All right. The son would shoot the gun from time to time, and he decided that he no longer wanted it. And again, 
he listed it on Gunbroker. Now, a lot of times people list these guns, they don't do a good job of listing them. And they want these ridiculous prices for them for the condition that they're in. So he ran this gun several times. It ne he never, uh, never met his reserve. So what I'd always do if it's something I'm interested in, and I believe that I could get it at a decent price, especially for someone who has run it for several auctions and haven't gotten a bite on it. I emailed him. We subsequently we had a conversation about it, and I wind up buying that gun for five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars, I think, with shipping and FFL. Um, think I'm about five hundred and forty dollars deep into that gun. Five hundred forty dollars. Now the beauty of this thing, it came with the stocks on them. Now they were damaged. They were damaged. I mean, it's a it's a forty year old gun. It wasn't going to be perfect, and that's okay because everything about it was reconditionable. The gun mechanically was perfect. It was dirty, but it was 40 years old. It's not going to be clean. So, again, I took it and I did a, a total disassembly and cleaning on it, put it back together. Uh, I uh, I, I reconditioned, refinished the stocks and took the same means, the same method that I used to refinish the metal on this gun, I refinished on this one. And this is how it turned out. Now, there's always going to be some naysayers out there and say, well, Vic Swole 58, you're just lucky. Well, I'm not doubting that. But I'm also good. And sometimes you have to be lucky and good in order to get these deals. Now, I see these guns right now on Gunbroker and all kind of other sales sites as well as gun shows selling for way more money than I bought them for. That's a $900 handgun. That's a $900 handgun. This is an $800 handgun that I've just bought and paid $624 for it, $29 for it. And what I'm telling you, that you can employ the same methods that I use to acquire my collection, to acquire the guns that you desire to have, and you don't have to break your bank to do it. You just need to be Persistent in your search, know what you're looking for, have a price in mind. Now, the price cannot be unrealistic, okay? Just have a realistic price in mind. Look consistently, look persistently, be prepared to pay for it when you get the price, and you can acquire them. Don't go for the pristine gun now, unless you've got that kind of money where you want to buy brand new and you, you, know, you want to pay for that pristine gun. Buy that pristine gun or buy that new gun. But if you want a really nice collection of handguns or, or long guns, for that matter, and you want to do this on a, with a budget in mind, it can easily be done. It's no different than buying and negotiating prices on used cars based on condition. You do the same thing with a firearm. And most firearm owners, most of them, are just like most car owners. You have a simple set of tools, you have a simple set of skills, and you can employ those tools and those skills in order to restore and recondition that gun back to a condition that you and everybody else look at it and will, and will be amazed at it. And in my opinion, in a lot of cases, the guns are as good looking or better looking than they were when they were new. And I know that's subjective because everybody doesn't like the same thing. And, it, and, and this notion about, oh, well, you know, you're going to destroy the value on the gun if you do certain things to it. I'm not going to devalue the gun because I got the gun at a price 
that's way less than what it's valued at now. So employ these concepts and some of these methods, and I promise you that you can, you can accumulate the, the collection that you want, and you don't have to spend your life savings to do it. Well, listen, I hope any of you that will stay through this video is a lot longer than I intended it to be. Find some value in this. Uh, I hope it was helpful. I hope it was informative. And I hope it was I hope it turns out to be useful. But listen, for right now, this is Big Swole 58 signing out. If you like the video, please leave your comments. Uh, if you don't like the video, please don't leave negative comments. Uh, but I always enjoy good positive feedback. I always enjoy information that I can use to better myself, better my videos, and to improve my collecting. But click the like button and subscribe. And I'll Big Swole 58 signing out. I'll see you in my next video.